Hello, my name is Darren Daly. I'm the Principal Statistician of the HRB Clinical Research Facility in Cork. And today I'm going to talk about how to interpret this plot. Now, this is a plot we call a survival plot. And we use it when we're interested in understanding how long it takes for some event to occur uh, in different samples of patients. To understand the plot, we have to start with the axes. Uh, and on the x-axis, we have time starting at zero, the beginning of our study, and going in this case to just over two years, 28 months. On the y-axis, we have what this is as OS for overall survival, but it's the percent of people in each sample who have not experienced the event to that point in time on the x-axis. So here, if we start the plot at the very top left corner, it means that at time zero, the start of our study, 100% uh, of our patients have not experienced the event we're interested in. Now you can see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six lines. Each one of these represents a different sample of patients. And they're usually different based on some kind of a treatment they're receiving or some risk factor of interest that they all share. To understand what's happening in the survival plot, we'll follow this bottom group here. And so you can see it's like a staircase descending down uh, to the right. And what happens is, as we move to the right across the graph and they drop, the drops reflect patients in that particular sample experiencing the event. And thus, the percent of people who haven't experienced the event comes down. If we look at the 50% line, the median survival time, and come across, we can see in this group that that's at roughly four months. That number's over here as well. The median survival time measured in months, and they have it at 3.9 months. We eyeballed it to be 4. And then there's an interval here, 1.8 to 6.9. And this is, if we want to make some kind of inference about whether the median survival time in that particular, that specific sample of patients, if we want to try to apply that to thinking about the entire population of potential patients, um, this is a number that gives us some sense of how confident we should be that this estimate applies to the larger population. If we stay at four months and we go from this group, we saw the median survival time was roughly four months, and we go up to the very top group, we can see that virtually none of the people in that particular group, that particular sample, have experienced the event of interest. And so if we look at even their median survival time, we see NR for not reached. So you can see that their line never even comes close to crossing the 50% mark. These little tick marks here uh, that you can see going up, those are called our censored observations. And one of the interesting features of survival analysis is that we can include these people in our study even though they fall out of it. So these are people who at this point, so for example, for this person, uh, we followed them all the way to this point in the study, so about you know, 13, 14 months, and they've dropped out. And they could have dropped out for any number of reasons, the side effect of the drug, uh, they've moved locations. It doesn't really matter. For this kind of plot, it's just all we know is they made it to this point without experiencing the event. And so at the very least, we can take into account all of this information. We don't know when they experienced the event, but we know it didn't happen here. And so they're included in these calculations up until this point. Uh, the last thing to make note of is that here they've given a kind of summary of the data in terms of the raw numbers for each particular time point, giving the number of risk in each group. Uh, I hope that was helpful. Thank you for listening. Uh, if you can check down the text below, there's a link to our Statistics for Citizen Scientists group, uh, which is a Facebook or a meetup group. And you're very welcome to put up any questions uh, that you might have. Thank you.